And that's why I'm kind of willing to be YouTube's guinea pig. The polymerization process for full, Jesus, for furl, what the heck? Hey now besties, today you will notice that I am not in my nail studio, but in my office. And that is because I wanted to do something a little different today that I know you guys have asked me a lot. So I constantly talk about, you know, buy hypoallergenic products, get clean products, be careful when you're shopping. But a lot of the times I get asked, rightfully so, what the heck are you talking about? How do you actually shop for nail products responsibly? And that is what I am here to talk to you about today. So let's get into it. I have been meaning to look at these for a very long time. So if y'all don't know, a prey is the creator of gel X. Technically they are the only gel X and everything else is just soft gel, but we just call it gel X. They have a ton of different products and this has been requested time and time and time again because it is such a popular professional brand. So I finally decided to look at them, but I figured because Apre has such a diverse product lineup, some of them are HEMA free, some of them are not, I figured this would be the perfect time and the perfect brand to show y'all. First, I want to show you how to look for an SDS. Where would it be? And that kind of varies obviously depending on the brand, but typically it is somewhere down here and it'll say something like SDS or MSDS, but here they don't have it as readily available. But so let's look, maybe it's in the U. Yep. Here we go. So MSDS forms. All right. So I do like that they've separated it by, you know, all products or TPO free, HEMA free. So we're going to be looking at the HEMA free as per usual. I love a good cat eye. So let's take a look at the cat eyes. This is typically what an SDS looks like. It's got, you know, the manufacturer and all the information about them. And here down is where you would find the chemical names and the percentage. So we've got polyurethane, that is 70%, but then herein lies the problem. 18% hydroxypropyl methacrylate, that is HPMA. So that's a no-go for me. If you are only allergic to HEMA and not HPMA, which is actually pretty rare, then this will work for you. But let's move on to the next product. Probably the one I get requested the most is the Apre Sensitive Gel. And that is not here. So we've got the prep, the top... Okay, so that's weird because you would think it would be here since it's not supposed to have HEMA, but let's look at all of them. And let's look at the Extend Gel, Extend Gel Sensitive. Okay, so we've got polyurethane, all right, isobornoacrylate. This is Iboa, and this is a monomer that I don't react to, but a lot of people with a HEMA allergy do. And, but it, you'll see it's a very small quantity. It's 1% to 10%. Not a huge fan of this because like, is it one, is it 10? That makes a huge difference to people with allergies. But then we've got tetrahydrofurfil, Jesus, furfuryl, what the heck? How do they come up with these names? Tetrahydrofurfuryl methacrylate. Never heard of this methacrylate. So I honestly have no idea if I react to it, but we'll find out. And then hydroxychlohexylphenylketone. Shouldn't react to that either. I've actually seen this in other products that I don't have an issue with. And then trimethylbenzoyl diphenylphosphine oxide. So this is TDO instead of TPO, and this is the photo initiator. Again, very, very small percentages of this. Let's go back here. It's a, it is a little odd that this is not in the HEMA free line. Maybe they just forgot to add it. Uh, let's check the sheer gel color because you guys know I love a good base color. So let's see. All right. We've got amino methacrylate copolymer. That's pretty high. That's primarily what it's comprised of. And then we've got acrylate copolymer and acrylate copolymer again. Okay. So I want to talk about acrylate copolymer. Now, if you go here and you look at the definition of acrylate copolymer, it's basically just a polymer chain made of two or more acrylate based monomers. The reason that this is concerning is because you never know which acrylates. Sometimes it'll say here, we've got methacrylate copolymer. So we know that's made of methacrylates. Now the polymer chain could be HPMA, HEMA, ethyl methacrylate. It could be any methacrylate. And so you also don't know the quality of the copolymer 
And so you can still react to copolymers, especially if your allergy is very severe or you are extra sensitive to methacrylates. I know that companies like Light Elegance and Attain, they use oligomer chains. They're large enough that they shouldn't cause an issue and they shouldn't penetrate the skin, again, in theory, because you can still react to any of this stuff. But I did want to talk about copolymers because this is something that we see a lot now. So basically with these copolymers, the process is like maybe 25 or 50. Again, depending on the quality of the copolymer, the polymerization process may be 25% or 50% kind of completed for you. And then you finish out the rest when you cure in your gel lamp. I typically have not had issues with acrylate copolymers, but I'm using high quality brands and my allergy is not one of the worst ones. So if you are highly allergenic, I would be very careful with the copolymers. So notice that acrylate copolymers are used heavily in cosmetic products, sunscreens, etc. Again, I have not had an issue with these. I have used lotions that use acrylate copolymers and have been fine, but I did use a sunscreen and when I rubbed it near my eye, it swelled up immediately. It, was, it swelled dang near shut. So, so just be careful. And even though I don't have an issue with it, do not be surprised if you do. And it's the same thing with ingredients like bishema and dihema. And I've also been asked what the difference between those are. Let's talk about it. I've done quite a bit of research and although they are not the same, it doesn't necessarily specify exactly how they're different other than they are just distinct chemicals with different molecular structures. They're both generally considered less allergenic, but from my understanding, and I don't even remember where I saw this, but um, from my understanding, although both are considered less allergenic. Bishema is a larger and more complex oligomer structure, so that one is generally considered a bit safer. I have seen people that still do react to oligomer-based polishes like Attain or Light Elegance. Okay, so back to a prey, we've got the Gel Calor. So they recently released their uh, Hema and TPO Free. So let's look at their top coat. Okay, so we've got Acrylate Oligomers. That's fine. And then Acrylate Monomer. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's a pretty high monomer content. Then a UV initiating agent. This would be the photo initiator. But I'm a little confused as to why they don't list it. So I don't love that because, okay, you have a photo initiator, but what is it? <laughs> is it TPO? Is it TDO? Like, what are we working with here? All right, let's look at the bonder. Ethyl acetate and ammonium hydroxide, pretty common. And the prep, butyl acetate, acetone, ethyl acetate, and isopropyl. Again, pretty, pretty normal. All right, now let's look at their jelly series. Jellies are another common polish that does not usually come in a hypoallergenic version. You've got acrylate copolymer, again, polystyrene comethyl methacrylate. Not super sure about that one. And then acrylate copolymer again. So clearly, you know, as you can see, there's, it's two different types of copolymers, meaning they're using different types of acrylates. And then you've got your photo initiator. So Apray has quite a bit of differing chemical formulations. So and that's why it's always important to look at the SDS. I want to show you another example. And yes, I do plan on trying this brand at some point, but this is a UK based brand. So they'll really get you on those fat taxes. So once again, we're going to come all the way down. And typically this is where the SDSs live. And sometimes you just kind of have to dig a little bit. Let's see if we can find it by going to product details. So there it is. You go to product details and it's got all the ingredients listed out right here. And then the SDS is linked. This is what you want to see. You'll see here McConnell Labs. And that is because Hona was actually formulated by Jim McConnell, the chemist behind Light Elegance. So we love that. This SDS looks a little different from Appraise, but generally the same concept. Here you've got 20 to 60% of Bishia hydroxyethyl acrylate, and then you've got bishema, bishydroxyethyl methacrylate. 
again, 20 to 60%. So I really wish they were a little more specific with these because is it 20? Is it 60? I mean, that is a huge, huge, huge gap. But again, very similar formulation to that of Light Elegance. This is what you want to see when you are shopping for nail products. You want the SCS to be readily available. Let's look at the Silky Cat Eye. All right, so polyurethane, that's fine. But then we have Acroloyal Morpholine. And if you've seen my Melody Susie video, I'll link it above for you. Acroloyal Morpholine absolutely wrecked me. I actually had a worse reaction to that than I did to Hema. So I am probably going to be staying away from these cat eyes. Something else that I've really been wanting to try are jellies. So let's see. I have yet to find a jelly polish that is hypoallergenic because even like Bling Galleria, which makes a lot of great hypoallergenic artsy stuff, their jellies still contain methacrylates, which do flare me. So let's have a look at these and see what we're working with. Those are some really cute jelly colors. I think I would like to get strawberry cooler. Ooh, that's pretty. Look at that. So this is done with all of their jellies. Love that. Let's look at the SDS sheet. That's pretty much what I expect. So I will definitely be getting some of these jellies. If you're wondering why the heck should I listen to this chick? Well, here is my chemistry degree from YouTube and Reddit University. <laughs> okay, no, in all seriousness though, I've just done a lot of research. There's nothing I'm saying that isn't readily available for you to look up and confirm, which I strongly suggest you do. I think everybody should be cognizant and at least slightly knowledgeable as to what they are putting on their fingers. Uh, methacrylic acid is another one that could be quite problematic. According to my allergy sheet, I'm allergic to certain acrylic acids. And again, that, that's just what makes it so complicated. There are so many chemicals. There are so many like variations of them, so many mixtures. It's, it's just a lot. It's a lot, honestly. Uh, so sometimes you just have to try it and hope for the best. And that's kind of what I do. And that's why I'm kind of willing to be YouTube's guinea pig <laughs> and I try it so that you don't have to because my allergy is still considered relatively mild compared to some people that can't even breathe around this stuff without flaring up and they break into hives and their skin peels. So I'm willing to try it, but I am not suggesting that you do. So I will be getting some of the Apre stuff and I'll be making a video on reviewing those pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. But I really wanted to show y'all my shopping process because as you can see, even within the same company, the SDSs can vary and the chemical formulations can vary. And I've already made this mistake where I assumed that just because everything from bio seaweed gel was HEMA free and HPMA free, I went ahead and I just ordered their cat eyes and I did not look at their SDS. And then I started getting a little itchy. The reaction thankfully wasn't too bad, but then I found out they did have 30% HEMA in them. So just always, always, always make sure you are looking at the SDS. Even if it is a brand you already know and trust, make sure that if it's a new product, you are looking at that SDS. And if the brand you are looking at does not have an SDS or doesn't at least list the products that they use on their website, run, run, run the other way. Just, just run. It's not worth it. There's, it's not worth it. There's so many good brands out there that are transparent with their consumers. And I've gotten a lot of flack for using words like clean and hypoallergenic, but whatever y'all, it's, it's just semantics. At the end of the day, this, this right here, everything that I just showed you is generally what I mean when I'm talking about clean and hypoallergenic brands. Now, somebody said, well, why don't you just say brands that are transparent with their SDS? No, because I don't necessarily consider that to be clean if they are still using highly allergenic ingredients like HPMA. Like I, it doesn't matter if you're telling me that you're using this ingredient and being transparent because at the end of the day, they're still using allergenic ingredients like HPMA. And that's why I don't use that synonymously. When I say clean, I really do mean just free of the most common known allergens or oligomer and polymer based. So I really wanted to clarify that because people have been coming for me over my use of that terminology and not really clarifying what I mean when I say a brand is clean, even though I made a whole video on it. But anyway, I just wanted to reiterate. So I hope this was helpful to you when you are shopping for your newest nail products. Let me know if you've tried any of these, which ones are your favorite and if there are any you would like me to try. As always, make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any of my videos. And if you can, I would really, really, really appreciate if you hyped the video within the first seven days. It helps out new creators tremendously to push out the video so that we can spread allergy awareness and further our mission of no new besties in the allergy club. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one.